What up, guys? This is Kibo Cars. Back here again with another video. Today, I got an early preview at some Neon Abyss gameplay. Neon Abyss is a run and gun roguelike action platformer developed by Vivo and published by Team 17. This game is going to be releasing on July 14th in just about five days. It should be releasing on Xbox, PS4, Switch, and Steam. Today, I'll actually be playing the demo on the Nintendo Switch. However, this is mostly just to give you Xbox and PlayStation players a preview at what's coming here in five days because more than likely, you guys may be playing this game for achievements or trophies. Now, as mentioned before, this is a roguelike game, meaning that it has permadeath and level randomization. Now, let's dive into it. This game doesn't have any voiceovers for the text, so I'll read it to you guys. It says, My friend, the enemy of my enemy, I'm Hades. Titan group took most of my powers and destroyed your family. I need fighters like you to put an end to the Titan's reign. If you seek revenge, drink it. Who is he, Morpheus? Let's drink it. Oh snap. I think we just ended up in the neon abyss. Alright. Press R to teleport. Hmm. I suppose we're going to proceed to the right. Like any classic side-scrolling game. As you can see by the controls, guys. Again, I'm playing on the Nintendo Switch. I'm using a Pro Controller. Okay, so you can jump on those jump pads and you can hold down to go through them. Now, as I mentioned before, or at least as it says on Google, this game is a roguelike game, meaning that it's randomized and it has the permadeath. However, most would argue with that definition and call it a roguelike game because you do um, you know, gain some sort of progression as you play because you are able to um, get upgrades so even though you die you are upgrading your character um, throughout the playthroughs and ultimately you're gonna get a little bit better and better every run what the heck is going on here is this a cat gun the Terry well right off the bat that's definitely unique a cat gun the, I don't know why but straight off the bat that gives me reminders of uh, the South Park Nintendo 64 game with the cow gun okay so I used in this case ZR to flow up with the balloon up there I got a couple gems and I got a key and holy crap so this cat spits out fish bones that's the projectile that it spits out not too sure how much damage it does but that's definitely interesting. Press Y to use your bombs. Okay, that's a grenade. I'm going to go ahead and skip out on getting that gun just because, um, you know, I want to keep Terry, man. Terry, the cat gun, that's just way more interesting. So we're going to keep rocking with Terry and we're going to advance through this randomized dungeon. So just know, as I mentioned before, you know, this game is randomized, so what you see here is going to be different from when you play the game, because all of the dungeons are randomized. So, let's see. Actually, you know, maybe the, the very beginning of each uh, level or playthrough might be the same, but eventually it definitely does randomize. Luckily, we have some sort of map, so we can get through each of these dungeons. Okay, we're already going to face a boss battle. That's a creepy looking cyclone bat. His name is George, I guess. George, the god of pills. Apparently he's spitting pills out at us. From what I've seen and heard about the game, that's actually going to be one of the highlights while playing this game, is the game has really cool and creative boss battles. On top of that, it's pretty easy to pick up just because it has the standard twin stick controls. You move around with your left thumbstick and you aim with your right thumbstick. I'm not too sure if the achievements and trophies have been released for the game quite yet, but I'm sure they're going to be coming out shortly just because we're just about five days away from this game launching. But I can imagine the achievements are going to be pretty difficult as with most roguelike and roguelike games. And as mentioned before, Team 17 published this game 
and they don't publish just any mediocre indie game. So just the fact that Team 17 is involved, you know this is going to be a good one. I probably didn't even need to tell you Team 17 was involved. All I had to say was Cat Gun. Say Cat Gun, and most people are going to play it. Like literally, try describing this boss battle to somebody else. I just killed the God of Pills. His name is George, and I killed him with fish bones and a cat gun. I mean, let's go ahead and admit it. That's pretty creative, and that's going to get anybody's attention. So anyhow, we got this first boss, or maybe mini boss, uh, out of the way. So we're going to go through this portal, and let's see what's happening. Okay, so it appears that there's four mini levels, and then a final level, or maybe that's like a final boss. I wonder if each of these mini levels have a boss or a mini boss. I suppose we will find out shortly. Not too sure how I get through there or there. I suppose I will just proceed to the right. Okay, so we have some new enemy types and wow, that did not last long. Apparently I wasn't paying attention to my health or HP bar. So I guess we can go ahead and see what happens when you die. So when you die, it takes you to the bar which is your upgrade screen and apparently all of these are locked in the demo so I can't really experiment with any of the upgrades however it does let you see what they are so just know after each run you're able to um, use your experience or uh, gems that you earned in your last playthrough to upgrade your character and I don't know if the bar is called Neon Abyss or what but it appears we're at a nightclub and the bartender is where you upgrade your character. Pretty interesting. Yeah, see, so she's asking, do you have any gems? So you use those gems that you collect in each of your runs to upgrade your character. And then we have, it looks like, five different main bosses. Interesting. That's what I like about these roguelike games is there's a lot of mystery behind them because of all the randomization. Okay, get it, bro. So you can press R to dance. I'm sure there's an achievement related to that. They need to make an achievement for dancing for like 10 minutes or something like that. And here it appears that we can change our character. There's a there's a lot of characters actually. Anna, Matt, Lucas, R6, James, Ming, and Zach. But in the demo, it only lets you use the first two characters. So I'm rocking the default character. His name is Wade. It says that he's a reporter with multiple combat skills. So we're just going to keep rocking with Wade. Let's see. What does it say here? Input a seed. Every time you start a new run, you will get a unique seed, which records all of the random elements of your run, including the item drops, room configuration, etc. It's displayed at the bottom of the pause page. Very interesting. The first thing that came to mind was achievements and trophies. However, there is a disclosure at the bottom in red that says this disables all achievements, trophies, and collecting the faith seeds. So with that being said, I'm not too sure what the advantage would be to using one of those seeds. I mean, that would be cool if they let us do it for achievements. It would make the achievements and trophies a lot easier. That whole process of putting in a code to get back your progress or get to where you were at before reminds me of the old school save methods from back in the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis days. You know, to get back to a level, you would have to input a cheat code that advanced you all the way to that level so you could continue where you were at because back in the day, we didn't have no game saves. All right, it appears that I can open this shop door with three crystals. So let's walk in here. So it looks like we have four different items for sale. I'm not too sure what that mask does, but I do not have enough coins. And this guy doesn't take gems, he takes coins. Uh, so I suppose that separates him from the ne Neon Abyss bartender. Okay, and what is over here to the left? Okay, so let's see here. I think we officially started our second run guys so let's go ahead and see how far we can get here in the second run and then I'll probably go ahead and end this gameplay video hopefully I can get some footage of another boss battle or mini boss 
because again, these boss battles are super interesting and creative. Now, this time I'm going to be paying attention to my health bar. Your health is represented by the hearts on the upper left hand side of the screen. Each heart represents two hits that you can take. So ultimately, you can start off by taking six hits. I'm sure after playing a few runs and after the course of playing the game for a while, I'm pretty confident that will be one of the things that we'll be able to upgrade while playing the game is the amount of hearts that you have or ultimately the amount of hits that you can take. I'm not too sure what activating those crystals do. I think those are portals so that you can teleport um, from one area of the dungeon to another. Pretty much like checkpoints or like quick travel stations. And there we go. That's one of those crystals. Now those crystals are spent at the uh, Neon Abyss Bartender. That is the form of currency that she takes uh, for the upgrades. Versus the other guy charges coins to buy some of the items um, in his shop. I'm not sure if you guys remember, but his shop was the one that had the four items laying um, on the floor next to the stand and each of those items had a price next to them and we weren't able to afford anything quite yet so yeah he charges coins and you can see how many coins you have on your lower left hand side of your screen I wonder if each of the characters have like a special attack or if there's a difference between each of the characters or if it's purely cosmetic because ultimately I would think it just comes down to you know what weapon that you have equipped I don't think that there's any other buttons that I'm missing or anything like that for special attacks okay let's see here I just picked up a agent watch um, I guess it's an agent watch weapon or it's an attachment or something like that but it said that every time I pick up a key it will increase my weapon damage however if I use a key it will reduce my weapon damage pretty interesting I don't think there's anything too special about this gun Let's go ahead and proceed to the right, and we can see about clearing out these enemies. See, yeah, this gun doesn't even do that much more damage than my other gun. I want the cat gun back. Where's my homie Terry at? That's another thing that I'm going to be looking forward to in this game, is all of the different creative type of weapons. That and the boss battles. I don't know why, maybe it's just because Team 17 is involved, but I feel like this is going to be a Game Pass game, or at least I feel that it would... You know have great success on game pass just because a lot of people I don't know maybe it's just me but a lot of people aren't spending their money on games like these and they tend to you know spend their money on the big triple a games but when you can put an indie game like this on game pass it can introduce it to a whole new audience and a lot of people can end up jumping on on board and then you get into it you know transferring via word of mouth and like hey you know play this you have game pass you can download this game those sort of conversations so I don't know hopefully it comes to game pass so you guys can experience this as well all right we're back to the shop and I still can't afford anything I just have 20 21 coins I can afford half of a shield okay so you can end up getting a shield as well I don't even have any shield yet I probably should have purchased half of a shield I don't know I pulled up the map and I'm just gonna head towards the boss battle guys uh, just because you know that's the juicy footage and that's what I'm going to show you guys so now again the boss that we're going to face or at least I'm going to face is going to be randomized um, it's kind of a dice roll in terms of what boss you guys face guys alright the boss door is up here on the right what okay no requirements I was gonna say what's the requirements McTucky God of fast food Wow, this is totally a parody of Ronald McDonald. I don't know about the other guy though. What's wrong with him? The other guy's barfing. Is he like uh, uh, food poisoned from the fast food or what? You got the Ronald McDonald guy all happy making his dough. And then you have the food poisoned Ronald McDonald puking on you. That's definitely interesting, I gotta say. Let's see, I might actually be able to beat this boss, guys. I'm almost there. And I have a whole heart left. Wow. And then he just morphed and his health bar revived. And he had a full freaking life bar. Every time I think I'm about to win and I start talking crap, I always lose, man. Anyway, guys, that about wraps up my gameplay preview for Neon Abyss. Keep an eye out for it. It's going to be coming to Xbox, PlayStation, Switch, and PC in five days on July 14th. 
as always i appreciate you guys tuning in if you enjoyed this video please leave a comment and don't forget to like and subscribe